Greetings, calculus students. Uh, today we're going to be learning about something called orthogonal trajectories. So, well, what is orthogonal trajectories? Well, so that's when you have two different families of curves in which each member of one family is perpendicular to each member of the other family. Um, and it turns out this idea is actually really useful in physics, uh, and it comes up quite a bit. Um, but it can be a little bit difficult to, to understand at first. I, I think it's better to see with a picture. So I'm going to pop over to Sketchpad, and we're going to do one family in red and one family in blue, and take a look and see what this looks like graphically. All right. So I think this idea of orthogonal trajectories will make a, a lot more sense with a graph. So let's actually start with something that's pretty familiar to us. Um, let's look at parabolas. So this is a pretty simple parabola here. So um, let's, this is y is equal to 0.2x squared. So just a parabola going up like this. And I'm going to look at a particular family of parabolas, so not just this one here in blue. Um, I always want the vertex here to be at the origin, but I'm just going to change this initial coefficient right here. So maybe instead of 0.2, you know, I could raise a little bit. And as we increase that, that's going to make our parabola skinnier. Um, I could also decrease it. And for a split second, when that C right here with this coefficient, I'm actually going to call it capital A, when capital A hits zero, for a split second it'll be flat, and then when A becomes negative, you have parabolas going down. So I have this entire family of parabolas like so. All right, um, so let's keep that on the back burner for the minute. This will be our blue family. Um, so there's really an infinite number of these different parabolas, so there's a little sneak peek right there. Um, let's put that aside for a moment, and now let's look at ellipses. So remember, ellipses are kind of like oval shapes, and I want to look at a particular family of ellipses. So this one right here is an example of one. And there's something special about this ellipse. I want to look at the entire family of ellipses where the horizontal radius is exactly the square root of 2 times bigger than the vertical radius. So this is a little reminder what the equation of an ellipse looks like. So if you remember back from algebra days, so it's x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. And the a and the b are these numbers in the uh, denominator of these portions of the fractions right here, and they essentially control the the different radii, the horizontal radii and the vertical radii. So you'll notice that right now, this vertical radius is about 5, and hence that's why there's a 5 squared on the bottom of this fraction right here. And this horizontal radius looks like it's just a smidge bigger than 7, and if you'll notice right here, I have square root of 2 times 5, which is, in fact, a little bit bigger than 7. You know, like 7.07, um, so on. Okay, so this is one particular ellipse where the width is, you know, 1.4 times bigger than the, than the height, the radius right there. So, but that's not the only one I want to look at. So I'm going to change this 5. I can move it around a little bit. So I get all these different ellipses, but all of them are in the same family. So this is the family of ellipses, always centered at the vertex, right? That's the H and the K there, those zeros. So it's centered at the vertex. The only thing I'm changing is the radii, but I'm always keeping the horizontal radius root 2 times bigger than the uh, vertical radius right there. Okay, so um, just to sort of show you again that there's a whole lot there, um, so there you go, there's like a little sampling of the infinite family. So, all right, why am I showing you these two different things? Let me pull the parabola back for a minute. So if you look at, here's just one example of our parabola family. Here's one member of an ellipse family. And it turns out some, there's a special relationship between them. Because look at where they're intersecting. All right? So if you look at that, you'll see that they're intersecting at right angles. Now, I can't really say they're intersecting at right angles because referring to angles means you're talking about straight lines. So the fancy word that we use here is to say they're orthogonal. So if you were to zoom in, it would sort of look like 90 degrees. And technically what we actually mean is if you pretend like this were a straight line on the ellipse there, like a tangent line, 
and if you look at the tangent line at that spot to the parabola, what we're really saying when we say that curves are orthogonal, what we're really saying is that the slopes of the tangent lines form right angles. Okay? Or to say this in terms of calculus, we can say the derivative at on the red curve at that point and the derivative of the blue curve at that point are opposite reciprocals. Because right? remember, if slopes of lines are opposite reciprocals, that's what makes the, the lines be perpendicular. So when we talk about curves being orthogonals, technically we're actually talking about uh, an aspect of the derivatives right there. So it looks like it's about an angle of pi halves there. It looks like it's about an angle of pi halves there. In fact, when I say about, it turns out it is exactly. And we're going to prove that in a minute. But it's not just this particular ellipse and this particular parabola that are orthogonal. Okay, They're not the only ones that are hitting at right angles right there. So, in fact, my claim is if I move this blue one around and look at different members of the family, so I'm changing this A coefficient right here, no matter how I change it, it's always hitting this red one at a right angle, no matter which one I look at. In fact, and there's an upside down parallel. You can see it's still hitting there at uh, pi halves. So, in fact, I can also do the same thing with the red one. Let's not just focus on this one that has a vertical radius of 5. So, if I move it around, it's also hitting this parabola at right angles. And again, it's not just that parabola. I can look at any parabola in this family and any ellipse in this family and they're always hitting each other at right angles. In fact, let me just uh, let me go back to our originals and here's something that represents our entire family of parabolas and there's something that represents our entire family, our red family of ellipses. And notice that every single red ellipse is hitting every single blue parabola at pi halves angle. So yeah, just pick any blue you want, any red you want, they're always at right angles to each other. So that's what we mean when we say these two families are orthogonal. So what we're about to do now is what if I only gave you the parabolas? I only give you the parabola here. So I say, all right, I've got this family of parabolas where the vertex is at the origin. And I were to say, all right, for this entire family, can you come up with another family in red that has the property that it's orthogonal to every single member wherever it intersects uh, with the blue one. So now we know what the answer is, it's the ellipses. But how would you come up with that on your own? So it turns out that involves uh, solving um, some separable differential equations, which we'll do right now. All right, so let's explicitly state what our goal is for this problem. So we want to find the orthogonal trajectory to parabolas with the vertex at the origin. Now, we already saw graphically what we think the solution is. So we've already seen its ellipses in where the width of the ellipse uh, is root 2 times the height. And again, always centered at the origin. So how are we going to be able to actually get to this answer using calculus? So the first thing to do is to write down an equation of your original family. So we need to write down an equation of parabolas that have their vertex at the origin. Well, that's not too hard. So that is just going to be y is equal to ax squared, where a is some constant here. Uh, in fact, it can be any arbitrary constant because we want the entire family of parabolas here. Well, if y is equal to ax squared, then that means the derivative of y is simply 2ax. Just did the regular power rule right there. So this is saying that, so imagine we've picked some particular a, so the slope of the tangent line at any single x, this is the, the y prime of that. The, the slope of the tangent line is given by this formula for any particular x and any particular parabola we're looking at with the a. Well, our goal is to find the orthogonal trajectory. So if these are our blue parabolas, we want to find the, the crazy red shapes that are going to work. Again, we know they're ellipses, but what do we know about the y primes on the red families? So the symbol we usually use for that is y perp, okay? So the perpendicular frames, we want to know the derivative of that. So remember, um, in order to make the right angles, the slopes have to be opposite reciprocals, the slopes of the tangent lines. So to take the opposite reciprocal of 2ax is you do negative 1 over 
this formula. So that part, this is the general technique, is always going to be if you're given some family, take the derivative and then do the opposite reciprocal of that derivative. And our goal is to find not the red y prime, but actually the red y. We want to get the actual equation out of this. So this is a differential equation that we need to solve. Now, before we go to it, here is the subtle part that a lot of students miss. So it's tempting right now to think as if a is a constant. Um, but really it's not, because remember, this we want this red family to work for every single a, right? So not just for some specific a when we're looking at a given parabola, it needs to work for all parabolas. So this a, calling it a, sort of makes you think it's some constant here, but really it needs to work for all possible values of a here. So we can't just leave it as an a. So what we need to do is go back up here and figure out what the a is. So for any particular point on some fixed parabola, the a can be given by looking at a particular point, y over x squared. So again, let me emphasize that. So for any particular blue parabola we're looking at, if we fix on some blue parabola, the coefficient of it is going to be the y coordinate of that point over the x coordinate of that point. So if that's our a, and again, this, this can vary parabola to parabola, right, and point to point, but it's always going to be true that on some fixed parabola, a is y over x squared. So now that I know what a is in terms of our variables y and x, I can substitute that back into this differential equation we're trying to solve. So instead of writing a, which sort of leads you to think you can treat it as a constant when really we don't want to treat it as a constant, we go back to the original differential equation, solve for our constant, and the reason why there's a constant there is that's our parameter that controls the entire family of parabolas. So you're always going to have some sort of constant in there given a family. So you solve for that constant, plug it in to your opposite reciprocal differential equation, and we get this. So, and I'm just going to do a quick little simplification of this because uh, x over x squared, we can count one of the x's. And I also kind of don't like the fact that there's a fraction inside of a fraction, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x. And so in the end, it simplifies to be negative x over 2y. So this is the differential equation for our red family. So I'm going to go ahead and write it so we can see that it's separable. So instead of this whole y per prime, I'm just going to write it as dy dx, where in this case the y is referring to the red curve that's always going to be orthogonal to the blue one. So dy dx is equal to negative x over 2y, and clearly this is separable. I'm just going to you know, pretend like a cross multiplying, multiply the 2y over here, put the dx over here, throw integral signs on there. So we've got the integral of 2y dy is equal to the integral of negative x dx. And these are pretty simple to integrate. So the integral of 2y, that's just, again, just using the power rule, add 1 divided by the new exponents, 2's cancel, so that's just y squared. The integral of negative x dx is negative x squared over 2. And don't forget, we have to add a constant. Again, technically, there's a constant integration on both sides, but I'm just going to go ahead and absorb it all into this side and say it's plus c. And at this stage, it's just a bunch of algebra. So um, let's just go ahead and move this over to the other side. So it's going to be x squared over 2 plus y squared equals c. And I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by c. By the way, the reason why I'm doing all this is because I know what the answer is going to be ahead of time, at least based on our picture. So I want to make it look like the equation of an ellipse. That's why I'm going through all these algebra manipulations. So if I divide everything by c, well, divide everything by c, so the c over c is going to cancel to be a 1. And this c right here, I'm going to write it in a funky way. I'm going to write it as the square root of c squared and do the same thing over here. So in the end, what we end up with is x squared over root 2 root c squared plus y squared over root c squared equals 1. And the reason why I did these algebraic manipulations is this exactly matches the template for an ellipse. So, and notice that indeed the horizontal radius is exactly root 2 times what the vertical radius was. So we've actually shown it. We've proven it. So we started with the family of parabolas, where the vertex was the origin, and by doing this opposite reciprocal trick and solving for the constant and then separating the difference equation, we ended up and showed that the orthogonal trajectory to our parabolas is, in fact, ellipses, where the horizontal radius is root 2 times the vertical radius.